Um, who's on? Okay, Yakov's on, but he's playing. Um, really want to play some of these. Okay, now I, I see. It. Okay, here comes a challenge from Keaton. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll t okay, so I'll play him. I mean, I know he's low rated, but I'll play him nonetheless. So, I'm gonna play an Alakin. Haven't played this line in years. Um, probably Knight F3 or ED6. Not sure which one he'll do. Both are playable. Play G6. Bishop F4, Bishop G4. Uh, Don X for me, uh, we qualified. The Seattle Sluggers, I believe we finished in second place. So we did qualify. Oh, did he have bishop takes f7? Jeez, did I just hang bishop takes f7? If he didn't play c3, he could have just taken and played um played knight g5. That was that was bad. That was really bad. Very bad. Um someone just wrote, how much did Red Bull pay you for taking the drink? Um Red Bull didn't pay me. I went out to um, I went out to Walmart and got got a pack of uh, Red Bulls. So I know I've only I think I've only been drinking water when I've done the streams, but a little bit tired tonight. So figured it made some sense maybe to get some in with some energy. So now I have this knight e2 check. So I'm going to take the bishop and then I'm going to take b2 and his rook on a1 is trapped. So he's going to have to go like knight d2. Take the rook, just a clean exchange, and even though I've got no dark square bishop, I mean, he's got no light square bishop to create threats against my uh, king. So he can go knight e4 here, I guess. I can play queen b8 maybe, but then he has like queen e7 or something, something weird. Queen b8, queen e7 takes, check, king g8. Yeah, that should be winning, but I somehow I don't feel like even letting him have a faint glimmer of hope, so I'm just going to play queen e5 and avoid any nonsense. So someone, I, I missed the comment because I'm trying to focus as well at the same time, but someone just said, um, who said that? Z Fox, I promise you a good gaming mouse will improve your will improve your, your aim by a lot. You need one with an optical sensor like a Logitech G502 gaming mouse and a good mouse pad like the Razer Goliath. Well, if you guys want to like donate, then um, then I'll, I'll make sure to buy it, order it off of Amazon. Um, that's... That's my stance. So if you guys really think I should get something like that, just just go ahead and make some donations, and I'll, I'll go I'll go log on to Amazon and and, uh, and buy it. I mean, why not? It's an experiment. It's an experiment. So um, so who knows? Maybe it'll actually work. Maybe I'll become like thirty five hundred a bullet or something. So Queen A three. I'm just going to play Queen E seven. Protect the rook on F eight. Now he's probably going to check on B two. I'm assuming. And then I'm gonna, I'm going to block with the queen here. He'll probably go back to a3, and then I'm just going to play, like, king g7, probably. Okay, he plays queen f2, so he wants to play knight takes g6. Play king g7 here. Now, probably he'll take on d5, I'm guessing. Rook c1, so he wants to go, like, rook c7 or something. I could just take the knight, but I, I, I feel like playing queen f6. Not really sure why I'm just like I'm just like playing random moves for no good reason. Now he goes rook c7. Now I have some issues, so I've got to be careful. So I'm gonna go knight c4. Try to go in like knight e5, knight g4, something along these lines. So queen a7. I'll play knight e5. Go for knight g4. So bishop d1. I'm gonna play like I can play rook f4. Yeah, why not? Just take away all his, his counterplay. Now, I don't know, do I want to take f4 or h4? I think h4. King g1. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tickle him, throw him the extra check, gain a second on the clock, and then take f4. I mean, I'm just up two, two whole pawns here. Should just be technically winning. There should be three, but now I, now I have knight g4, don't I? Or is there, there's no mate? There is no mate, so I'm just going to play d4. Even though I open this diagonal, I'm protecting this pawn more than enough times. And also by going d4, I cut off his queen. He doesn't have any any backward di diags here. Rook c2, now I'll play knight g4. Now I'm threatening me like everywhere. h2, e3. 
queen c7. I'll check. It's going to go king f1, play d3. Now I can't move the rook off the file because then there's mate, mate on f2. I'll go king h6, and now I'm threatening mate on h2, like I'm threatening knight h2, so... Okay, so that's that's one. So there should be two. E3. This is going to look probably very similar to something I played earlier today. Although earlier today the guy played bishop e7. Uh, Constantine something. Constantine Tarlev maybe, I think it was. Castles knight b5. Knight c6. Now I'm just going to take the... Bishop and play d4. I mean, he's got these double pawns. Now, if you can get, like, the setup with e4 and d5, then he's fine. But now he's got these double isolated pawns, and this looks really, really ugly. So, queen c7. I'll just play bishop d3, protect. Put the bishop on this diagonal as well. On this d3, h7. And I'll just castle. And this, this is pretty bad for black. I'm just going to play rook d1, and I'm just going to try to gang up on these, these ugly... Double isolated pawns here. So c8, I'll just play c3. I don't want to play c4 because then he'll go d5 and get rid of one of them. So h6, play rook ac1. d8, I'm just going to play knight g3. Now I've got a five, knight f5 ideas hitting this pawn here on d6. And I think I'm going to go for it. Is there some reason not to? No, not that I can see. So I'm just going to play knight f5. So rook e6. Now, what do I want to do here? Bishop c4 hangs a knight. So I think I'm going to play bishop b1 because now, again, I'm still threat because now I'm threatening this with three pieces. The bishop was, was cutting off my rook on d1. So I go in bishop b1. Now I'm attacking this pawn three times. So once again, you guys, if, if you want to make a donation and you really think that I might play better with a different mouse, then by all means, go ahead and um, go ahead and uh, make a donation, and I'll, 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 I'll make an attempt with a different mouse. So rook c5, now I, I can play f4 here. I don't know if it's good, but I like it. Takes maybe e4. Yeah, I like f4. I'm just going to force him to exchange the queens, because his queen is trapped, so he's going to have to take. Maybe he can go queen d5, but I'll exchange anyway. Basically, I just want the queens to come off, so he ends up with these ugly double pawns. So he does go queen d5. He's threatening checkmate on g2. Now, if I take and play, like, rook d3, maybe I just take and play c4 or something. This is strange. This is very strange. I don't actually... I'm not actually sure that I'm... I'm I have anything good here. Rook d2, maybe? Yeah, I'll play rook d2, cover the uh, g2 square, I guess. I mean, it's, this isn't really what I wanted somehow, but maybe it's okay. g6, so I can take and play f5 or something, but this is going to get very messy. So I think I'm just going to play knight g3. And so all my all my pieces are holding all the glue together. Now his knight on f6 is a little bit loose. He can actually choose his rook or something. Okay, so he plays knight g4, but now I think, yeah, now I'm going to trade the queens because now I can just go e4. Next move. And it's not, the pawns, it's not a weakness. Play e4. I'm just going to play like, uh, maybe rookie one, maybe not. I, I think I'll play rookie one. I had c4 as well, but I, I like rookie one more. I'll play e5 because now his knight is, I'm threatening h3, trapping his knight on g4. And he fell right. Oh, wait, h3, he's got knight f6. Oh, shoot, that was terrible. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, jeez. What a terrible move. Ay, ay, ay. So now I'm probably going to have to flack him, unfortunately. And, I mean, I'm probably going to be successful, but that doesn't mean I'm happy with how this has turned out. So knight f3, rook h5. Or, okay, well, that's a free exchange. And now it's going to be pretty straightforward and standard, because now he's got these really ugly pawns. So, play rook e1, king, F, king h7, rook e7, and I mean, this is just over. d4, I'll play. I'll play something. This is actually going to turn into something probably pretty normal, but we'll see. 
So h6. I might play g5. I think I'll just play d6, though. d6 and then maybe g5 next move or something along those lines. Yeah, I think now I'll play g5. Knight d2. Now, I could play, like, what was it? Didn't, didn't, um, I'll play knight f4. Didn't, um, Vashe play something like this against Grishchuk, like, every game in their match recently, I think? Something like this. But the bishop's already on e2, so in that match, he was able to, Grishchuk was able to play bishop f3. Whereas here, the bishop's still on f1, so g2 would hang if he ever tries to develop the bishop. Now, he plays knight f3, so I can take the knight. And why not? Let's have some fun. Let's see. So he's going to have to take with the queen. I play knight d7. So I'm not sure how he's protecting this, because if he, he can't really, he can't push because he hangs b2. So he plays knight c3. So if I take, he wants to go knight b5, I assume. And then if I take, that's annoying. Somehow that protects everything for him. Hmm. Okay, I'll still play c5, try to open up this long diagonal. E5, um, do I really want to play Benko style? Play A6. Well, now he's going to play A4, and B5 doesn't quite work, but he doesn't He doesn't want it, so he goes Bishop D3. So I, I, I want to play B5, but I can't quite make it work somehow. So I've got to come up with some kind of concept. I don't know what I'm going to do here, but do I want to take and play Knight F6? I'll try it. Why not? So he goes queen of three. Now I'm going to play b5, try to open it up, try to make it really, really messy. Doesn't mean this is good, but I'm going to try it. So we'll see. So queen a5, he probably will castle. So then I take c3, and now, now, I've, now I've got great pawn. So if I take, he's obviously going to play rook c1. Then if I play like queen d3 takes, takes. It's probably too much material, I would assume. Probably. So I'll just take and play like queen a3. He's going to take. I'm going to play like rook b8. And the position's, position's interesting. It's it's fairly balanced, I would say. So I'm going to play a5, a4. And by balance, I mean I think the position is roughly equal. So rook e1. Ooh, that's a problem. Or no, it's not, because the rook on c1 is hanging. So I can just shift my king to f8, because if he takes, he hangs the rook on c1. Alex Gabrielov writes, really? Is he playing b3 lel? Um, I actually play b3 pretty frequently. It's not um, not that much of a novelty. If you've seen any of my streams, I, I do generally play it. Um, and I play it for a couple of reasons. I find it to be a very interesting opening, first off. But secondly, okay, wait, rook c3? Can I just go a4? He wants to go rook e3 or rook e7? I'm not sure what he wants to do. Rook e3, a, b3, rook e7... Queen b2. And I'm holding everything together here, I think. I think this is just winning. Because if he attacks my queen, I've always got this d4 square from which he can't attack me. So I'm going to put my queen on d4 right here. I could probably have taken the pawn on b3, but it's only a pawn, and my king, king here is pretty loose, so it's better to make sure I solidify everything first. Now I'm going to go... King g7, and now, now basically I've got exactly what I want. Everything is solid and, and held together. Uh, Chessbay94 writes, would you play certain openings for donations? People are asking. Yeah, I will. I will. I mean, openings that are within reason, of course. I'm not, I can't just play like d3, king d2, for example. But, but otherwise, yeah, I definitely can. So rook hg8, probably he's going to have to exchange something. Like if he could keep the queen and the two rooks on, he would have good chances to create some kind of attack maybe. But if the rooks, if he's going to have to exchange even one set of rooks, then my king is completely safe on g7. So, okay, so what's the one? I'll play b3. I guess nobody has any opening, uh, no donations for openings yet, so I'm just going to keep playing... Normal stuff. Bishop g6, I'll take. I'll play d3, knight d2. Bishop g2, probably e4, castles. I, I want to see what he does over here. He castles, so now I'll castle. 
c6, e4. This is pretty pleasant for white. Black has double g-pawns. White also has the bishop pair. Bishop c5. Now, I could play e5. I think I will. I'm just going to play e5, d4. Create this big pawn center and try to attack him on the king side. Like, I want to go h4. Probably f4 first. Yeah, f4 first looks right. And he's going to go like, it's going to go like c5, c3. And now I've got this big pawn chain where he really wants this knight on c6 here to, to attack the, the pawn chain. Um, so b5, I could play a4 even. a4, b4, c4. But I'll just play standard. I'll play knight f3, give him his b4. Because here his knight's not on... Um, Spartan, six, Spartan Man 64 donates. Uh, sorry, I didn't see the whole message. Um, thank you anyway for the donation. I appreciate it very much. Um, I didn't read the whole message, unfortunately. But anyway, so I'll take. I'm just going to take the pawn here on b4. Now, see, he really wants this knight not on e8, but on c6 here. That's why in the French you can play this, this structure generally, and it's pretty reasonable. But here, um, I'm just going to play, I'm going to keep rooks on the board, because I, I want to play like h4, h5 at some point. So he wants to bring the knight to b5, so I'm going to play queen d3, cover the b5 square. I'm just going to play rook f2, maybe swing, try to take advantage of the c file. And probably at some point I am going to play bishop f1 now, or h4. It, it depends on what, it depends on how he tries to create counterplay here. Play queen b6, so now I'll play rook c6. Actually, rook c6 was a bad move because now he was threatening knight c3, so now I'm going to drop the rook back to c2. That was a dumb move, but because of how poorly his pieces are placed here, the, the knight and the bishop specifically, now I'm going to play bishop f1, attack the knight. And he goes to a3, which I wasn't really expecting. I thought he would go to um, I thought he would go to c3, just sacking a pawn, because now the knight's kind of out of play, because now, now I'm just going to go h4 and try to kill him on the king's side. C8, rook d1, because he's got no entry squares. This knight here is kind of stuck. I mean, he has no, he really has no squares from which he can access anything. I mean, I guess he could go knight c4 here. That would be an interesting sacrifice, but I wouldn't take the knight. So queen c6. So now, now I'm going to play knight g5. And again, this knight is really doing nothing. And knight also takes away from the rook on the a file. Black can't bring his rook in either. Oh, Sparta Man don donated um, in, for a mouse. Okay, which which mouse is it? And play the grob. Donate fifteen dollars if you can play the gro grob and not lose on the spot. Well, that's not that's not asking a whole lot. I have to say because the grob actually um, losing with the grob is not. I mean, or not losing. Sorry, but not. Um, sorry, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. I just lost my. My train of thought. Um, I was going to say, I, it's very easy to play the grab and not lose on the spot. Whether you can avoid losing long term is the question. But losing on the spot in the grab is, um, would, is is very rare. So I'm going to go all in here. I'm just going to try to attack him right away. So he takes, I'll take. He's going to have to take on f5 because I'm threatening to take that way. So he takes. Now I could take, I could play bishop g2 also, but I think queen f5 makes the most sense. Queen e6. Now I can play g6, for example, which is interesting. I can also just bring my queen back, which I think is what I'm going to do, because now I want to go bishop h3, use this other diagonal. And again, this knight on a3, if you look here, it's completely out of play. It's just stuck here. Now he has queen g4, but I play rook g2. So he plays knight f8, I'll play bishop h3. And do I want to gambit or not? Do I want to gambit material here? Survey says I... I don't really want to, so no, I won't. I'll, I'll just take and I'll play e6. Now my bishop here on b2 is not ideal, so I want to see if I can somehow relocate it in a, in a good way. So rook e8, rook e1. Now I'm threatening to take on f7. If he takes, I take, and then I have rook h2 check at the end once he moves the king to the h file, h7, h8. So rook e7, but now I can just take and play bishop e6, and... Black is kind of busted here. So let's see. So, okay, next one, e4, I'll play knight f6. Oh, right, so grab is with white. So that'll be next game. Next game with white, I'll try the grab. 
Now, Knight G5 is, is the correct move by theory. So a couple of people have played it against me. Close castle. E6. That's a strange move. Not from, it doesn't look quite right here. So I'm just I'm I'm gonna call his bluff and take. He's gonna go knight g5 or not? No, he's not gonna go knight g5. So I'll play knight c6. Attack the pawn here on d4. Now if he goes knight g5, I'll play bishop d4 and bishop takes f2. So he goes c3, so I'll play e5. She's got d5 now. e5 was maybe a bad move, because he's got d5, knight g5. But he plays it in this order, so in this order, I'm going to say screw it. I'm going to just take. I'm just going to play. I'm just going to give the exchange and not care. So I've got two pawns. I mean, I've got I've got two pawns here. Sorry, not h6. I've got, I've, I've got two pawns. He hasn't developed any of his queenside pieces. So I, I really like the position that I have here, even though it's probably completely fine for white. It's just much easier to play for black, I think, so... We need two. I'm gonna play e5. Maybe I'm just gonna try to play d5 e4 and build this huge center if I can. And I think I will now because I'm gonna play d5 because now I can always take bishop h4 e4. I mean he's probably gonna have to take now because if he doesn't, I mean it's just terrible. So takes and now he's got problems too because like I've got this diagonal. And I also have knight f5 hitting his bishop. So it's a discovery on the bishop and now I'm threatening to take on b2 as well. So this has not worked out very well for uh, Keaton. So, okay, let's see. So, I'll, oh, I forgot. Shoot, 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 I forgot. Okay, sorry, I forgot. Okay, next white game, next white game, next white game, next white game, grob. Grob, 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 shoot. I temporarily forgot, sorry about that. Okay, so next white game is gonna be a grob. It's gonna be the grob, it's gonna be the grob, and it's gonna be the grob, okay. A5, I could play A4, I don't really want to, but I'll play A4 because now I've got knight A3, knight B5 with him having put his pawns on A5 and C5. Like normally black has pawns on A5 and C6 and then you no longer have this B5 square. With A5, C5 I can play A4 and play put my knight on this nice outpost on B5. So knight D4, I don't really understand what that does, so I'm going to play C3. I'm going to go knight B5 now. Knight d6, now I'm going to play c4. I assume he's going to take on b5, and I'll take back with the a pawn. Or not, he goes knight f5. Now, play h4, but I don't really like h4. I'm going to play bishop h3. Maybe exchange the knight on f5 if I get the chance. So he takes on c4. Now, I can take with the pawn... Or not the pawn, sorry. I can take with either pawn. I can also take the knight on f5. So this is tricky here. I'm not sure what... The, I think the correct decision would be to take the knight on f5. Now the question once he takes is whether I take with the d-pawn or the b-pawn. That's not trivial. I mean, I want to take with the b-pawn, but I suspect taking with the d-pawn is better, but I'll do it. Just to open up this, this b-file, because I'm going to probably put a rook on b1 and try to... Um, Try to hit this b this b seven pawn once it becomes backwards. So he goes rook e eight. Now I think I'll play rook b one. Again, long term plan. Try to put pressure on this pawn on b seven. Bishop f eight. Now I could take on e eight. I could play bishop e five. What do I want to do here? I think I will take the. I'll take the knight on f six because I'm going to get this d five square for my knight. So probably. Yeah, so he takes, I take, he's going to take, I'll play knight c7, and now I'm going to get the nice outpost on d5, and now I'm again attacking the pawn on b7. So, by taking with the b pawn on c4, this has turned out absolutely brilliantly, and I've got the exact setup that I want. So rook d8, knight d5, and now b7 is a huge weakness for black here. Queen 6, I'll play queen b3, again attacking this pawn on b7. Rook b5 was also possible. Um, and here I think I will play queen b5, because now if he takes, I'll take with the rook, and then I take the pawn on a5. 
And if he goes e6, he, I mean, he's, he's just hanging, this, this pawn on a5 just hangs. I'll take, probably he'll go queen e2. And now I'll just go, now I'll just drop the queen back to c3. And now I've got exactly what I want. Just up a pawn. I'm going to be able to go rook e1 and control the whole e file. So yeah, for those of you who are wondering about me, I'm in terms of watching the chat, I, yeah, I am basically flipping flipping screens. So h5, will play h4, stop any h4, h3. So yeah, so I am flipping screens during the game, so just in case you guys are wondering. Play rook e1. Probably he'll go queen a2, I assume. Maybe not. Queen a2, can I force a trade of something? No, not really. But he goes queen g4. And now I think I will just play king g2. Maybe the idea of playing f3, possibly. Actually, if, or knight e3 even, maybe. Depends what he wants to do here. So rook g6, now I'll play rook e8. Threatening knight e7 check. So now he resigns. Okay, so... Alright, next one. Play something unusual. I'll, play, I'll try to play like a grob. Not a grab, obviously, but this, I'll play g4. Knight e1, I'll castle. I think I actually played this in a game against Boris Gelfond some time ago in, like, um, in Zurich or, or Monaco, one of those tournaments where I basically played an early g5, g4. Bishop e3, Knight c2, I'll put the bishop on f5 now. Takes, I'll take. So he wants to play like this. So he wants to be, he's given up the bishop. So if I take, he'll trade and go knight b4. So I, but if I don't, he'll play, he'll play knight, knight b4 anyway. So now I have an interesting decision. I think I'll take, though. I'll take and I'll play rook fd8, I'll play knight e4. If he takes on c6, I'll take on c3. If he takes on e4, I just take. So he plays that, so I'll take. Oh, shoot. Does he have knight e7 here? I can still... Okay, but knight e7, I go king h7, takes knight e2, knight d4. So I'm still okay here. I might not be winning this one, though. That's the only issue here. So he's obviously going to take on d4 or g7 first. A little bit lucky here that knight e7 didn't, didn't cause me real problems because it very easily could have. So takes, takes. Bishop f4. Now I could play c5. Is c5. I'm going to go c6, put it on a light square because on the dark square the bishop could potentially attack it later. So I'm going to put the pawn on the light square so that I can, and I'm going to go d3 here obviously. Play rook d7. Okay, d8, and now I, maybe if I if I get my dream, I, I'll bring the king all the way to e4. Probably I'm not going to get that be that fortunate. So f3, I'm going to play h5. Could play f5 as well. Both are possible. So he wants to go king e3. So he wants to be the first one there. Um, let's see. So I think I'm, I'm going to play bishop f8, threaten bishop b4, also keep bishop c5 alive. So here he's probably going to play a3. That would be my best guess. Or not. He has bishop g5. Ah, tricky, tricky. Okay, so now I have to be careful here. So bishop b4 does not work. I have rook b8. I also have like rook e8 maybe. Rook b8 also is interesting. Um, I think I'll play rook b8 though. So he goes b3, but now I can go king g6 attacking his bishop. And now if he goes back to f4, I go to d8, and he's lost any chance of attacking my rook on this diagonal now. And at the same time, by playing b3, I always am going to have bishop b4, because now he can't play a3, because the pawn's on b3, not b2. So he can't stop me from getting this bishop here to, uh, to b4. So he goes bishop e3, now I'll play rook d8. And now bishop b4 is a huge threat. I mean, maybe c5 is the only way to stop it. So he goes rook b2. I'll play bishop a3. b1. Now I'm going to play bishop b4. So now I'm threatening to go d2, maybe. Not sure if I will, but it's a move. I'll check him. 
to b3, but now I think I can take. Now I can take and play rook e8, and now I'm infiltrating on e2. So now he's got, now he's probably just lost. So I need to remind myself again, the grob, grob, grob. Grob next game. All right, everyone, the grob, it's showtime. Okay, bishop g2. If he takes, I go c4. In fact, isn't this considered to be quite bad for black? Queen b3, right? I thought this was I thought this was like the only reason to play g4 is for them to like if they fall for this trap. So e6, I'll take. Probably e d5, and then I'll play knight c3. Um and now I'm attacked now he's got big problems because like both these pawns are attacked. And I've got this really long diagonal. So here by playing knight c3, if he goes c6, I'll take the pawn, and he's going to have to move the knight, and then the pawn will hang on c6. Whereas if I had taken right away... Okay, now, now here I kind of have to. I don't really have a choice. I have to take. Now if I take on d5, he takes, I take. Rook b6, queen c4. Okay, let's see. Takes, takes. I don't see it. I actually don't see it. So maybe I'm just blundering it here. I see five. I have queen. Okay. I think I'm. I think I'm okay here. I think I'm. I think I'm. I think I'm in, in business here. Knight b five was also possible, but I want to see if I can grab material and just beat him. Um, okay. So rook b eight. I'm going to go queen c six. Oh, does he have some way to try and force a draw? Like rook b6, queen c4, rook b4. Well, if knight e5, though, I have queen a4 check. And now when he goes bishop d7, I go queen e4. And now I've got this nice pin on, on his, uh, his king. Now I'm just going to play d4. Now when he moves the knight, I just exchange queens, and I'm just up a pawn. So knight c6. Okay, so if I take and play knight f3, knight b4, this should be 3 or bishop e4. I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm going to play this. Play knight f3. Almost certainly he's going to go knight b4 here. I would, I'd be shocked if he doesn't. Because here he's down a pawn, so he has to play for counterplay immediately. Oh, sorry. So, uh, uh, who sub subscribed? Was that SS? Sorry, that was SS. Um, oh, shoot. I, I missed that. Uh, thank you, SSB Mix, for subscribing to my Twitch channel. Again, you guys, as I think I mentioned before, I'm pretty, uh, pretty new to all this, this, this stuff. So, okay, so I'll play. Now, he, he didn't play that. So, I'm going to play A3, cover the B4 square. Um, do I want to go Rook G1, or do I just want to retreat my bishop? I think I'm going to play Rook G1, try to do something on... His king's on this uh, G file. Bishop f5, but now I can play e4, I think. Yeah. Now I'm just going to play e4, protect the bishop on d5, hit his bishop there, build a center. Bishop g6. Now I could take and play knight e5. I'm not crazy about it, so I think I'm just going to... How do I want to continue here? I'm going to play b4 so that I can develop my bishop to e3 or b2. Now I go bishop e3, though. He's going to play knight e7. So I think I'm going to play bishop g5, or am I going to... Yeah, I'm going to play bishop g5 here. So probably he's going to take, and then go like knight e7 anyway, but here... Here this should be fine. I mean, I guess in theory he could maybe take on d4 with the knight as well. Um, but then I trade take on d8, take on c7. Looks pretty good for white. So let's so bishop g5, so I'll play rook takes g5. Probably he'll play knight e7. That's what I would Ooh, bishop wait, what? Can't I just take? Well, first I can play rook e5. Knight e5 is there, but I'm just gonna play again, just keeping in line with the uh how I played in the uh the the pro chess league earlier. I'm gonna play play very technical, just get the winning position technically, and if I can't convert, then shame on me. I'm just a bad chess player. Rook e7. Play rook c5, he'll take, go rook a5, attack the pawn here on a7. Now I'll play rook takes e5. Takes a rook e6, I have bishop d5. Even, even after rook e6, I also just have f4 protecting the knight. So he doesn't have rook e6 here, so... 
Okay, so now the correct way to play this. Okay, I'm gonna play knight d7, put the knight on c5, attack the a6 pawn. I guess he has rook h6, but... So basically, I'm gonna try to gang up on this so that I can run my a pawn down the board. So bishop d3. Okay, so that, that's the grob. So I won with the grob. That is fantastic. It's almost as good as winning with the bond cloud. Not quite, because the grob, I think, is relatively okay. So knight c3, so I'll take. Play knight c6. Now, someone played this against me a lot back in the, the day. I think maybe it was Tamern, the, um, the, uh, the Israeli kid. Uh, I think it's, what's his name? Um, I forget his name. Um... So f4. So he wants to go e5 here. So I play h6, he'll play e5. Rook g8, e f6, f g5. Could be interesting. Could also not be interesting. No, actually h6 is just bad. So f4. I'll play d6, just protect everything. So he goes queen e1, I'll play h6. Try to force his hand here. See if he wants to take or not. Okay, so bishop h4, I'm going to play g5. And this kind of has turned into some kind of like weird like um, like knight or for some some kind of Sicilian. So I'll take bishop g3. I'm just gonna play knight e5 or not knight e5. But I think I will play knight e5. And I guess he's got some bishop b bishop b5 bishop b5 or something, which I just realized could be a slight problem. Bishop f2, I can take, or I'm going to play a6 here, stop stop bishop b5, stop knight b5, and then maybe I'll go bishop d7, rook c8, something like that, so king b1, bishop d7, I mean, I know he wants to move, play like knight d5, so I just have to keep that in mind, and not like castle and blunder knight d5. So bishop d4, I'll play rook c8, I think, still no threats here. Involving some kind of takes and rook d7. No, there are no threats. He wants to go bishop b6 now. So I can play knight g4, for example. I can also just play queen c7. Are there other moves? Like bishop f6 is there. Not crazy about it. Knight g4. So queen c7 looks like the... Ugh. Not, not, not really what I want to do. Let me put it that way. But let's see. Okay, I'm just going to drop my queen back. I mean, I'm hanging the pawn on g5 now. That, that is one thing that I have issues with here. So bishop b6. Now I can play queen c6, I think. Yeah, I'm just going to play queen c6, because knight d4 hangs the bishop on b6. He can't take on g5, because then I'll take, and I'll win the bishop on b6. So bishop d4. So he keeps trying to put this bishop back here. So now I'm going to play f6, so I protect this. Protect the knight twice. Now the bishop doesn't attack the rook on h8 if I want to move my knight. I'll play knight f4. Bishop f1. Now I'm going to start playing true Sicilian style. b5, b4. Try to attack him. g3. I'll play knight g6. And again, b4 is a real big issue here for white. So he has, he has some problems here. And also I might be threatening knight g4 and e5 or something along those lines. But now I'll play g4. Fix these pawns so that white can't play h4 and then open up open the the rook open the h file for the rook. Play queen b7. I, I really want to go like a5 b4 now. So he plays knight b3. I've got a lot of squares here. So b4 doesn't look quite right. Knight c4 is possible. I'm not crazy about it. Knight f3 looks. I like knight f3. Let's see what he's gonna do here. Bishop b6. Now maybe I'll play rook b8, or I think I'll just actually put my other knight on e5 here. I realize I had rook take c3, which I missed. I'm going to put the queen on b8, so I'm still keeping an eye on this this star for a bishop. Bishop b2. Now I could play rook c3 again, but I'm, I'm not crazy about the move. So I'm just going to play king f7, get my king out of the center, coordinate my rooks. They're, they're connected now. h3. I, I kind of expected that, um, but I can take now, can't I? Yeah, I can take because when he takes, his bishop on b6 is hanging. And he goes bishop a7, I just drop my queen to a8. And if he plays rook, like rook f1, then I can play knight g5 anyway, because if he takes the knight on g5, his bishop is still hanging. 
uh, even though my king here on f7 would be pinned, so I'd still be still be fine. So he does play rook f1. So knight g5 takes, takes, ah, he's got bishop h5. That's probably why. Okay, so now I could be in some trouble then. But I have knight g4 maybe? Yep, knight g4, queen f3, queen b6, and I'm still in business. And actually here he doesn't have any other moves because he's got no squares on this diagonal. So he has to take, now I'll take. He can take and take rook h3 now. On queen g4, do I throw in rook g8 first is the only question. Because otherwise I drop the h3 pawn. But if I play rook g8, does he have any moves? He has knight d5. Oh, I'm way down on time. Whoops. Okay, no, no, more, uh, no more talking. I gotta blitz him. I didn't realize how low on time I was. Yikes. Ah, shoot. <laughs> ah, too slow, way too slow. I just completely lost track of time that game. It's terrible, way too slow.